Welcome back to GNT Cups. Now it's interview time with a traveling band. Is it true that happiness writes wives? When do they feel the need to write down their emotions as songs? Well, I guess if darkness is on black, then you need to write happiness in white in order to see it. I never feel the need. It's weird, like, I, maybe it's changing now, but when I was younger and I used to, when I was writing it, and it was, it was always an, es an escape to try to get it out of my system, so actually pe people used to say to me, well, why, why are your songs always so troubled? Why, why are they so dark? Even if they're like surrounded by pr pretty melodies, they're never that, that happy. And I say, well, when I'm happy, I'm not sat in my bedroom with a guitar crying over the strings, do you know what I mean? But it's a bit emo, but that's how it was when I was a kid. I tend to write and feel in zanis of emotion, so if it was, you know, black, black sadness, what is happiness, that would just be the grey area and the middle's just kind of, and you're in between, and I never feel inspired at that point. So it's an idle life at each end. A silver pen. <laughs> how much do the surroundings influence what's written? I think at the time you don't really, why well, don't sort of, I don't take them in in a sort of, oh here's my surroundings and it doesn't come out straight away. It tends to, to be a sort of a delayed effect and how your surroundings make you feel at the time sort of it comes up later on and things that you didn't realise that you'd notice tend to, to pop into songs or pop into thoughts or writing. but. I think you notice the surroundings more when they're new. So when we when we tour the UK, it's um, I suppose we're so we're used to all these towns and used to the atmospheres and the smells and the McDonald's and the high streets all look the same. And, but then you go to Europe and it, you know it blew our minds and really gave us a, a, a lease of life out there to see all these amazing cities that we always wanted to visit. The, the bot verse are really something to write home yeah. about. Well. One sausage in, one sausage out. That's our motto in Germany. Inspiration and discipline. How do they find balance, if a balance is needed? There isn't one for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, think, I, think the, I think the most unspoken about kind of natural inspiration that any musician gets and they, they don't realise it's happening, it's just by listening to records and uh, as, you know, I, I kind of stay, try and stay disciplined in keeping up with um, the new music and being open to new sounds and stuff. But yeah, the, the biggest form of inspiration that for any musician is just listen to as many records as possible and you don't realise you're getting inspired. It's just really natural. Inspiration is kind of the subconscious rearing itself yeah, yeah. Um, of, of your experiences and you know, the things you're into. It's not, not always a conscious thing, inspiration. I think you just remember things and part of your brain, you put a track on and there might be a really beautiful hook in it and you remember that and if you try and write something you might not so much steel, but that's inspired you, you know, that's, that's the way, the direction your music's going. So, in that way, it's dis discipline for me, like, I think I think discipline for, for a writer or a band, it, it sort of has to become um, an unconscious thing, because if, if it becomes too sort of contrived and, you know, doing things, in a certain way, then that's when people tend to sort of want to do something else naturally. I think a lot of people who try and do art for, um, you know, as something beyond their passion, as you know, as a, as even as a career, they have to find a sense of discipline somewhere. But at the same time, they have to remain free because they're the same kind of people that didn't want to do a normal job. So. It's a difficult balance, and, and, you and as we talk, our bass player is in a salon getting a consultation yeah. <laughs> for his image. That's, that, that, <laughs> and that's discipline. That's, <laughs> that's discipline. <laughs> I think he just found the the, uh, the lady that washes your hair and rubs it for a short while attractive. So he's he's got really long hair. Our bass player, and 
he's just um, <laughs> we, we've not seen him since someone came down to this room and told us that he's gone to a salon for a consultation and I don't know if that's art or discipline that's just just uh, general vibes general vibes <laughs> Music industry, what's wrong with putting these two terms side by side? I mean, I there's, nothing wrong, there's so. nothing wrong with putting them side by side because it, it, it exists. Um, and there's, in my opinion, there's nothing wrong with the commercialization of art in general because I think they go hand in hand. They can be, uh, it can be like quite a, a negative thing sometimes, but art, art wouldn't exist without without its commercialization because there obviously wouldn't be the reinvestment into it in order for it to push on. If there was no money invested into art at all, then it would just stand still, I think. I mean, you can obviously create... Grandad, it's, Grandad. Happening. it's happening again. It's happening again. Uh, you can obviously no. do... <laughs> you can obviously do stuff to an extent, but I'm, you know, I'm personally not one of these people that you know thinks that oh, you know, the music industry is bad. I, I think it's, as, you know, in, in general, I think there's a lot, it, it can be a good thing, but I think for years and years it's been run by you know, corrupt idiots, and then the suits took over, and now it's run by just, like, idiots in suits who think they don't understand music. At least before it was run by crooks who loved music. But um, a band like us, we're, we're just trying to do things outside of that, that bubble. You've got to just make your own way in it. Have a, yeah. have a pretty good bullshit in the taxi, isn't it? <laughs> Most of the time. I think the main objective for us is like, how, how do we make the next record? And outside of that, it's sort of a lot of it we can't really control. So, and it's definitely heading uh, more towards the DIY kind of uh, cottage industry thing that, I, that I'm noticing. Even with producers, and they're doing it from their cellars in their homes or in their bedroom, you know, producing records. And the kind of the studios are closing down left, right, and centre. Some some still stay, but you know, you can do everything kind of by yourself now if you want to set up your own little business within this industry. Like, but that that's to me the way it's going. So it'd be interesting to see. Um, in say 10, 15 years time, maybe less, how, how the, uh, the music industry is shaped. I think, it's, I think the record companies are going to run out of money and what's going to happen is all the telecommunications companies are going to basically pay for music to be made and that's how it's going to work. Everyone will be paying, paying for it through the phone but cash yeah. to cash the society. <laughs> cash the society? Yeah, <laughs> pay for everything with your phone. Their blog is really well maintained, but where do they set the privacy gaps? We, we're not uh, we're not a particularly private bar. Maybe, maybe we should uh, leave it to the point where like we're doing a we're doing a gig today, and it was originally some fans of ours approached us about doing a gig for um, for their daughter. Um, who um, suffers from quite a rare disease, and we're like, oh, we got, we got interested in now. These this group of people have become our friends, so we never t tend to like have a problem with people coming into our lives in a in a within the natural way. And it, I suppose we approach the same thing about you know if if one of us writes a blog or we do a video, we're not that self-conscious or protective about the way people might uh, what they might think about us. Hopefully that makes us friendly. Yeah, there is we have there is a video up of Nedkin in the shower actually. Yeah, I think if you search YouTube for "Welcome to Africa," <laughs> I do have blog envy I though. About that. <laughs> I do have blog envy. You see some bands that have just got it so together and with their blogs. Yeah, I need to write more, but it's, it's, it's difficult, isn't it? We 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 were gonna on our last tour with. with we started off so well organised with Twitter and iPhone, and then about about thirteen hours in, we nah, just, that's not true. no, no, we did like a week, and it just kind of like, but we were all on it. We were like, yeah, yeah, Twitter, Twitter. No, what it was is we, we got back to the UK and we went, oh, we're in this town. 
This is great. <laughs> Let's go for a pizza hut. This is great. You're just eating a full Scottish instead. Yeah, you kind of you kind of lose your inspiration when you uh, get you get you get back to these towns that you played six or seven times in the last couple of years. But if we get the blog really together and and descriptive, then the amount of times people ask you how was the tour, you could just go and check the blog. <laughs> <laughs> and then, like, you get home and my dad's like, I've not seen you for ages, come on, sit down. It's like, I don't want to, like, nothing against my dad. I don't want to talk about yeah, it. How do you describe such a, an intense yeah. uh, four or five week period? Check the blog. <laughs> <laughs> Billy blog. Captain Blood. <laughs> they're, they're good. They're there for a reason, right? When it comes to style, is it important to have one or to be able to modulate it? Um, I've got odd socks on. I've got odd socks on. <laughs> um, we, we take an odd socks approach to music. Um, I think that style isn't something that we really thought about when we, the band started. It was, it was the most natural natural experience musically I've ever had. Um, We're all just so different stuff. Yeah, so, like. loads of different stuff, but what, what we what we had in common was this sort of, this passion and buzz for just singing songs together as a group of people, and that created this sort of, you know, this harmony sound without even really trying or going, oh, let's be a harmony band, let's sing, you know, let's try and sound like this band. It was never ever like that at all, and people sort of, Got into their natural spaces. Uh, Mugger had gone from playing bass in a in a, a band, and when he had always wanted, to, you know, to be the electric guitarist, so he was straight onto that. And I was, I came in as an organ player, and that, I guess that's my sort of spiritual home as a musician is on the piano and on the organ, and, and it sort of naturally fitted. And we just played some songs, and that was it, and we got started. But I think as as we move on, especially with the the third album that. With, in the sort of like re really early stages of sort of um, getting ideas together, I think maybe it'll be less of that sort of. Um, might be something that we go actually. Let's. What do we? What do we want to try and achieve with the? You know, is there something that we want to do stylistically within the production or in um, certain instrumentation? I mean, not to say that the last album wasn't we, but it was certainly us catching up with ourselves with all the songs that we had written over the, 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 the years of touring and we wanted to, to get them down. It's never been strict really. Um, for instance, Adam or Joel sent me an email, check this tune out, it's something I've never heard, you know. We're all into so much different music and artists and so I think that's how, I think that's good in a way of not focusing on the style and creating your own fresh sound and I mean we are a harmony band, It'll, I'm sure we'll still stick with the harmonies for the next album but we don't sit down and go right stylistically do we? We might stick a tune on and go that's a cool drum sound. You've got to leave it fairly open handed I think yeah. because you can set if you say you know if you become a style you're setting yourself boundaries straight away. That's not what you want to be doing. But even I want to be like Kajagugu. <laughs> yeah I think I think I like the idea of taking things away in order to create sort of yeah. rather than trying to add things to create style, take things away in order to sort of not make the boundaries but you know I just that's what I love about certain ways certain records were made like when I think it was Elliot Mazer, it might have even been Neil Young when they were in the harvest sessions just went over to the drummer and sort of either took all the cymbals away or only gave him one drumstick or something and, and then immediately sort of you've only got those options so that defines the style of what you, you're doing and might, might take take some of Mugger's digits off or something like that and see how he gets on. But I'd love a Fender Jazzmaster so if anyone, <laughs> out, if anyone out there wants to buy me one I'll create some Create a new with, style. With the extra string length on the um, on on the neck and the you know, if anyone wants to buy me a really stylish Fender Jazzmaster <laughs> sunburst, three three tone sunburst, I'll gladly take one off your hands. Uh, that's our style. If we can get one, that, that's the way we're going. But 
<laughs> I regret country gent, either of the two, um, I'm your man. I'd like a well it uh, please. We need to go shopping, we need some new instruments, we've got so much gear but we need more. I need a new pair of shoes. <laughs> <laughs> He's on the talking to me. <laughs> Was for the Larry right when saying that art is prostitution? Is there anything more important than to be listened to? That's uh, In answer to your first... Art is prostitution, I think, in a way. And... We do a lot of things to get our end away. Um, I don't know whether we're the prostitutes or whether we're the, uh, the gentlemen. I'm still trying to work that out. Um, With free prostitutes. I think I think the ends justify the means. Yeah, but, but we don't know when the end then the end is. But I prefer the uh, I prefer the journey between the means and the end. That's what it's about for me. That is the uh, the journey is the end is the means is the destination. I think. We're much honoured to have brought you the travelling band. Now as usual, stay tuned for what's coming next. And until then, bye! bye.